John Kirby doubles down on the White House's messaging regarding China and Taiwan. We have MSNBC saying that it's white privilege to care about gas prices and inflation. No, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. We also have Ron DeSantis telling Floridians what should and should not be taught within the school system and multiple illegal immigrants have committed crimes in the United States. All that and more here on The Ball Brat Show. Welcome to The Ball Brad Show. It is Friday, August 5th. And boy, oh boy, do we have a show for you all today. It is jam-packed with all sorts of goodies, and we're going to bring you all the news and information you need to know about. So heck, if you want to join us here at The Ball Brad Show, and we hope that you do, hit that like and subscribe button. If you're over at Rumble, hit the plus and give us a comment down below. And if you're listening on any of the podcast airwaves, Apple, Google, Spotify, etc., heck, folks, we're everywhere, leave us a lovely five-star review. Not only would you be supporting conservative, but most importantly, You'd be helping getting conservative thought and ideas out there to new viewers who haven't seen our content or our channel. So your help and support would be greatly appreciated. With that being said, let's jump right into the news with our lead story of the day between John Kirby and another man. This man's a national treasure. He works for Fox News and we have coined a term for him. If you hear this term anywhere else, you know who came up with it. Us here at the Bald Brad Show. The man is a myth. He is a legend. He is the gladiator. Yes, folks, Peter Ducey is going up against John Kirby regarding Biden's messaging on China and how soft it's been. Without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. I'll come back to uh, Peter and then, thank, and then I'll come back. Thanks, John. Why is it that over the last couple of months, President Biden's been so much tougher on Russia than he is on China? I wouldn't agree with the premise of the question, uh, Peter. Well, I think just... If, when Russia was getting aggressive around Ukraine, the president was out every couple days telling Putin, don't do it. And now China is getting aggressive around Taiwan, and we're not hearing anything like that from the president. Oh, I beg to differ. We've been standing up here for almost a week, Peter, talking about... Uh, uh, our oh, Peter, I, uh, I beg to differ. By the way, if you notice, he didn't know what to answer at the beginning. So once again, Peter Ducey's coming out with just the right hook, and, he, and he's never prepared for it. He was stunned the other day regarding this whole debacle with China and Taiwan and Nancy Pelosi going there. Didn't know how to answer it. Now he just comes out with the answer of like, well, I just disagree with your premise, Peter, or the, or the question. That's just a short form of, I don't know what the hell I'm going to say. I don't know how to answer this. And first of all, it doesn't matter if you disagree with the premise of the question. It's a question that deserves an answer. And the American public are looking for that answer of which you're not willing to give one. So this is this is the charades from the White House. This is the continued messaging that they want to push here, either dodging the question, not answering the question, spinning the question, or just outright lying about whatever questions presented to them in the form of some sort of answer that they're willing or not willing to give us. Now, the messaging just sucks from Joe Biden. And notice he's like, well, we've been up here for the past week. Yes, you've been up there and Kareem Jean-Pierre has been up there. Where's the president? It's been 18 months. Folks, I'm not sure. And somebody correct me if I am wrong. I don't think I've ever seen Joe Biden on that podium since he's been president taking the press's questions. Somebody correct me on that. And if I, if I am wrong, please link me the clip so that I can review it and look over it. Because maybe one time, but like I said, I don't think I've ever seen the president stand on that podium. I'm talking about Joe Biden in his presidency, take questions off the cuff from the press corps in that damn room. So no, he has not been up there. He's been super soft on them. The dude's in his freaking residency going, uh, China, uh, she should, should. Like, that, that's Joe Biden. That's all we've gotten out of him. But yeah, he's being tough on him. Our concerns about uh, what China was preparing to do, we put out uh, uh, declassified information that we saw what, what the Chinese playbook was gonna be. Uh, look, I stood at another podium uh, not long ago, and much of the same way we, we uh, reacted then, we're reacting now in terms of being honest and transparent about what's going on and calling it out for what it is. Um, and then today, talking about exactly what we're going to do to make sure we can help preserve a free and open Indo-Pacific. So I'm, I'm afraid I just challenged the premise of your question. I know you said that there is not a, a <coughs> call scheduled with Xi. Is there a reason why? Because President Biden's known him for decades. Yeah. He's got a lot of free time up there in the residence this week. He doesn't have free time. He, he's, Is there a he's, reason he can't just pick up the phone and he's call? He's been working all the way through his illness, quite frankly, Peter. So that's a little bit insulting. And um, 
it's not really that insulting. I mean, look at the way the economies ran. You can either look at it as being insulting or you can look at it as if he has been working and if he's working that hard to not solve anything, then the guy just sucks at his job. So if he's that busy, according to John Kirby, where he's working through his illness, doing all these things, you got open borders, you got a China and Taiwan problem. You have a Russia, Ukraine problem. You got an Iran problem. You got a North Korea problem. You got a domestic problem with inflation, GDPs in the negative. You got a recession, two consecutive terms of negative GDP growth, even though the White House wants to redefine it. I mean, the litany of problems, but he's working hard, folks. This is the same type of messaging when you had Karine Jean-Pierre come out and say, oh, he's doing everything he possibly can to solve the gas crisis, the oil crisis. Yeah. Okay, so that's going great. Sure, it's gone down a little bit, but we're still paying the hundreds of dollars more a month than we were before Joe Biden ever took an office. So this is the messaging. This is the debacle. This is the clown show. As for a call, it is. To, to it is. That, the, that someone who is isolating by themselves. You suggested he has a lot of free time as if he's not doing anything, and you know that's not the case, Mr. Ducey. Now look, as for a call with President Xi, I don't have anything on the president's schedule to speak to. If... Ever the president felt like a I don't have anything on the president's schedule to speak to. <laughs> it's filled up. What do you mean? You can't pick one thing of which you have literally China launching missiles near Japan, one of our allies, and Taiwan, five of them. You don't have anything to speak to as far as him maybe giving a phone call going, What the hell are you doing? Why are you launching missiles? Why are you doing this? What you like? There's nothing, but he's so busy. He's solving this. It's so important. You guys, all this is just so important. I guarantee you the idiot has a, a phone call lined up with something about climate crisis. Okay. There's something just lined up with that. I'm sure regarding putting windmills in the Gulf while well, you got freaking China launching missiles near our allies, as well as Taiwan encircling Taiwan with two of their aircraft carriers with all these tanks on the border right there of China. But yeah, no, there's nothing on schedule, but Hey, he's, he's, he's filled up according, according to John Kirby to Peter Ducey, uh, you know, he's, he's just taken as an insult. Oh, you know, he's, he, he doesn't have much free time. Uh-huh. Anybody President believe that was the appropriate way to respond or that it would, uh, that it would have an effect and an outcome that he wants to achieve. He certainly would be willing to do that. He's talked to, uh, she now five times. It's not like he's afraid to pick up the phone and, and call uh, President Xi. And if there's a, a, a if a call is the right answer, um, I'm sure that President Biden will do that. But I'm not going to get ahead of the president on this. I do want to stress. I said it before, but I I do think the your question begs me to say it again. That the lines of communication are still open with Beijing, and we're using those lines of communication. And I think you'll see that uh, in days to come as, as well. That's really important, and that's one of the reasons why. President Biden made that call a week or so ago was to make sure, and you saw it in Kareem's readout, to make sure that you know, those lines of communication stay open, and, and they are. Wow, just a great phone call. It must have been from the president regarding Nancy Pelosi going to Taiwan, and and then once she's there and leaves, they just launch missiles. No, that that's a great conversation. Clearly, clearly the president knows how to negotiate and actually uh, do well in foreign policy, uh, like John Kirby said, and so did Peter Ducey. Uh, you know, he knows Xi. he's been around for decades. He should know how to talk to the guy. He's been vice president before. He loves to do dealings with China. So does his son. You would think he would know how to talk with China about all this stuff and deal with them. But no, he's being soft on them because like we've said many times, he's in the pocket of the Chinese government. We all know what's going on with Hunter. Nobody wants to admit it. The Democrats don't want to look under the hood with it because they know they know everything regarding the Democrat Party. Joe Biden, Hunter Biden will be ousted. But you got Donald Trump making a phone call with Zelensky and you got a freaking whole uproar and investigation going on. You got a few idiot Russians on Facebook that freaking have less power than Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire do. And somehow there's Russian collusion with the election. Go figure all that opens up a massive debacle, spends thousands, millions, by the way, of taxpayer dollars on an investigation with Robert Mueller that never came to anything that basically said, yeah, we don't, we don't have anything. Sorry for wasting millions of your dollars for absolutely nothing of which we already knew there was absolutely nothing out there right, right out in the open. But this is how the Democrat party ran investigation after investigation on Republicans, no investigations on Hillary Clinton, no investigations on Obama regarding the, the whole debacle with the IRS fast and furious case. There's a great book called the people versus Barack Obama written by Ben Shapiro way back when phenomenal book that he wrote. If you want to see the debacle and everything that he could have been possibly tried for, at least went to school for in terms of the court, uh, 
going after him. Furthermore, you also have no investigations on Hunter, really. No investigations on Joe Biden regarding anything that he said on camera, off camera, being off camera, being the voicemail that he left. You can go on forever about this stuff on which Democrat Party is not willing to do and go after on their own party. Hence, Joe Biden. You guys get it. Moving into our next story of the day. And folks, this one is just head spinning, mind bending. You have an MSNBC host and guest saying it's white privilege to worry about inflation and gas prices while blacks are worried about being killed by cops. This is a real thing. It, it's just... <laughs> It's so crazy that these kind of clips just keep arising. And like I've always said, it is content, but there is a mythos. There is a whole realm in which the Democrat Party lives in that nobody else does. And I'm talking about reality, Democrat Party, non-reality. Everybody else is dealing with reality and just the amount of asinine things that come out of this clip in about four minutes is just mind blowing. I'm going to try my best not to pause it after every sentence these people say, because I want you guys to hear everything, but I'm just going to pick and choose a few things to talk about because we'll be here for an hour, literally an hour, just going over every asinine things these two people say. Let's go ahead and roll it. So in, if you think about the what you just explained in terms of how it's a liability, how playing, um, you know, uh, in these culture in the culture war space on issues like LGBTQ plus rights or even abortion, how that could be a liability for Republicans. But one of the convention pieces of conventional wisdom I read a lot about is that inflation and the cost of things um, is a liability for Democrats. I mean, how do you think that balances out? Do you think that bodily autonomy in the minds of a voter who's going into that polling booth, do you think that's more top of mind than the cost of their gas? You know, I think ultimately that in order to even have to care about inflation, you have to be alive. And if you're a woman right now who has a difficult pregnancy that's threatening your health, uh, you know what? That's going to matter a lot more to you, I think, than, than, than inflation. You know, and furthermore, elections aren't about how you start. They're about how you close. And I said months ago, Republicans were peaking way too early. When everyone wrote, them, wrote Democrats off for debt, I'm like, listen, there's a lot of game left to be played here, a lot of field ahead. And Republicans, every step of the way, seem to be hitting that self-sabotage button. I mean, just in the last week alone, somehow, they've managed to put themselves on the side of China, on the opposite side of veterans, two constituencies that they've really. We're, we're on the side of China? Since when? This is news to me. Somebody let me know. I read a lot of articles. I read a lot of news. I watch a lot of headlines. What is he talking about? I mean, you just saw our last segment. I don't agree with what China's doing. The Republican and conservatives don't agree with what China's doing. So what is this guy talking about? Furthermore, talking about this whole thing of, of against the veterans, talking about that whole thing that the Democrat Party wanted to pass when they're throwing in over $200 billion of things that have nothing to do with veterans in the first place. So if you want to give $400 billion to veterans, conservative Republicans are all for it. But this guy and his party just manipulating everything, making it seem like conservative Republicans aren't for veterans, all the while you have them trying to put in all this spending that doesn't go towards the vets in the first place. It's just, it's disgusting politics. That's the part of politics that I don't like. And if anybody's new to the show or even old to the show, you all know for the most part that I love politics. I think it's comedic. I think this type of stuff's hilarious, but also that type of messaging is disgusting and it's wrong because it's lying. I don't appreciate it. Don't like it, but let's move on. You know, been, been in their wheelhouse for years that they've upended and all the while they continue this extreme war on women. I mean, this is the only political party I can think of that actually uses the handmaid's tale as an instruction. Why is he singling out women? I'm sorry. I was told that there's the trans community, the LGBTQ plus elemental P. You know, I was told that men can give birth. Why is this just a woman's issue? Why is this not a man's issue? I think that's really d a discriminatory of him to say. I think that is, I think he should be canceled. I think quite frankly, he should be censored because of all that. Obviously, I'm being facetious. Obviously, I'm joking. This is the type of idiocracy we see from the Democrat Party eating themselves with their own logic of, Focusing on women, focusing, oh, this is like a threat against, you know, women and reproductive rights and all these things. But yet at the same time, they can't define what a woman is. But at the same time, they also say that men can be women and women can be men. I mean, just wrap your head around all this. Try at least. And it's going to backfire big mm. time in November. 
That's a frightening thought. I definitely don't want anybody to pick up that book and use it as a to-do list. That is not a good thought, Kurt. One of the things that you But doesn't question the man on any crazy ass thing he just said. Well, I guess no, that's a crazy book. <laughs> Nobody uses that as an instruction manual. But yeah, you're just gonna let that guy just ring off a bunch of idiotic things that's just cherry picking certain arguments and kind of throwing other ones under the rug and you're not gonna call him out on anybody. Now we know what side you're on. MSNBC is obviously on the left. Look, they're open about it at least. We got to give them credit to that. But heck, you're not going to call the guy out on a single thing he just said. You're just going to let it go. I said there that, <laughs> that I really think is important is the fact that, you know, inflation, it's almost a privilege to care about inflation as your number one issue. Um, the same is true of gas prices or even the idea that it's the economy stupid. I always found that analysis lacking because as a black person, I don't wanna get killed on the way to my job. So I'm glad I have a job. I'm glad I make a living wage. But if I can't be alive, <laughs> then what does that other stuff matter? I mean, speak to the idea that some of this stuff is existential in the minds of I'm just looking for what the hell she is talking about. Does anybody see it? Does anybody see it? Because there's rea like it. there's reality, and then there's this lady's fictitious, just oddball viewpoint of the world. Of the Democratic base in a way that it's maybe not for the middle of the country, the so-called middle, or even more conservative-leaning voters. Yeah, listen, if you just lost your house because of a flood in Kentucky, if you just lost your livelihood because it burnt down in a wildfire, if you just lost your life because you are the wrong color and you were pulled over somewhere, uh, inflation doesn't really matter to you or, or, or to your loved ones. First of all, hold on a second. Jesus, I mean, you guys aren't dumb. You, you see the shenanigans here, okay? It is mind blowing that he's going to use wildfires, floods, basically climate crisis is their agenda. That's why he's talking about it. And that even though you have all those horrifying things happen to your family, that you still can't worry about inflation and gas price and all the things. I like to point out both can be true at the same time. You just had your house wiped out. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg if you don't have insurance, flood insurance, fire insurance, whatever it may be to rebuild that house. Which, by the way, since inflation is going to be up, it's going to cost way more to rebuild that house. That inflation is affected by the gas prices that's going to cause the freight of getting, getting everything there to rise and go up. You have the price of wood and materials going up. You have a supply chain, a, a chain shortage happening. So you're going to tell me that both can't be on equal level playing field or at least somewhat in some sort of hierarchy with the family of both being a problem and both being somewhat serious. I mean, but it's a privilege. It's a privilege, a white privilege specifically. And we'll get to that in a moment of, oh, well, you know, it's only white people that would have to worry about inflation and gas prices. Uh, there are much broader things going on right now in this country that affect so many demographics that the dollars to cents case that, that has been made time and again about, you know, like I said, it's the economy stupid. Uh, there, there's a blind spot there. And you'll notice that the majority of people who make that statement are, are, are generally white. Um, I, I, there, there's, there, there's a real reckoning going on in America right now. And we're seeing multiple things converge from the threat to climate change that's upending people's lives and homes. To Did I not freaking call it? Did I not freaking call it? That's why he put all those things out there. See, climate crisis is the, it's the biggest issue. It's the biggest issue that we face. <laughs> it's not, it's amazing how they go from like the, 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 the kitchen table issues or how Joy Behar calls it, the countertop issues <laughs> to, you know, the floods and all these things into it's just white people that will focus on freaking inflation and, and gas prices. To the struggle with social justice, to still the ongoing struggle with a pandemic, uh, not, not to mention again, what Republicans have done, just advancing an entire war against women. Uh, yeah, th those are things that I think cut much more personally and directly than the overarching issue of inflation, because like you said, it's almost a luxury to even have to think about that when these other things are threatening your everyday life or the lives of your kids. I mean, we, we live in a country right now where if you send your kid off to school, you don't know that that child's going to come home safely because Republicans are in the back pocket of gun manufacturers in the NRA. Those are the things that I think matter just as much, at least, as inflation. It's exhausting. It's literally exhausting listening to these people. And like I said, you all can see that after every sentence, you can literally pause it and comment on just the pure stupidity that's coming out of this gentleman's mouth. 
and just the, the contradiction against his own party where you have Republicans making war against women. You've been telling us for years, for years that men can give birth. So if you're talking about abortion and men can give birth, why is it just a woman's issue? Answer me that question. Follow up. Why is this lady not following up with anything? And I love how he goes, oh, well, the, the NRAs and the, the pockets of, of the Republicans or vice versa or whatever. How about MSNBCs in the pockets of the Democrat Party and the progressive left, which is why they're not questioning you on any asinine thing that you're saying here. You just get to spew this garbage. And I love how he's like a, a DNC strategist or put strategy out there for the Democrat Party. No wonder, no wonder they don't deal with reality because this guy's clearly in some other realm. I would like to maybe visit it and at least give this guy a wake up call in terms of his own ideology, because I would at least question him on his antics, on the things that he says, because clearly nobody in his milieu, in his social environment, including their lack of meaning this lady that's not in his social environment clearly never questions him on anything this guy says mind-blowing so there you have it folks msnbc saying that it's white privilege to worry about inflation and gas prices because look black people don't worry about it asian people don't worry about it it's just a privilege i like to point out that in a lot of demographics even amongst the blacks and asians in certain areas, they are outperforming whites. So somehow it's just a white privilege thing, but it can't be any other privilege. Odd, no Democrats are going to call them out on it. They're not going to be canceled or censored. But if we say something crazy, like conservatives or Republicans saying something, we get censored, we get, we get shadow banned, you get your comments deleted, whatever it may be. I mean, you can literally, as a conservative or Republican, go on Twitter and say that a biological man is in fact a male and get banned or censored, meaning you actually said a fact and you still get removed. But these people get to say non-facts, idiotic things, and it just it just gets to fly out there. Everybody gets to listen to it. Everybody gets to hear it. So double standard from the Democrats and the progressive left. Now, let's get into a little bit of good news here with our next story regarding Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. There is a lot of people talking this guy's going to run. And before we jump into the story, I do want to talk about a little bit of a problem that we have here within our own party, in the Republican Party, or a potential problem is if you have Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump running against each other, the fear is this, that Trump is going to just go after Ron DeSantis and then that's going to lead him to have to go after Trump, right? They're basically going to be boxing each other, bringing each other down and just completely shellacking each other. And we can't have that. So this is kind of a fear that a lot of Republicans are starting to see if, if Ron runs here and so does Donald Trump, that it just could make the whole party look bad. It could divide the party because a lot of people love Trump, including myself, but hell, a lot of us, including myself, love Ron DeSantis too. One of them is going to be the primary, right? So if you make one look bad, let's say Trump did win the primary. He's like just completely obliterated Ron DeSantis in terms of saying mean and hurtful things, which happens in primaries. Then we need Ron to step up in 2028 and, and, and run during that time since Trump only has four years left, but you just shellacked and you and you divided the Republican Party and made Ron look bad. So all I'm saying is that we could have a potential here of a really bad problem coming up in 2024 with Trump versus Ron DeSantis. You need one or the other. Ideally, personally, I would rather have Ron DeSantis than Trump. Trump has a lot of baggage. The Democrat Party doesn't like him which it doesn't matter so much what I think of the Democrat party, but there's a lot of those independents, those that are middle that we can pull over to our side with Ron DeSantis running and Ron DeSantis is polished. His messaging is a lot better than Trump's. He's basically a Trump 2.0. He's an upgrade and look what he's done in Florida folks. He's done a lot of great things and we can expect a lot of great things from him in the white house. So me personally, I would like to see Ron DeSantis over Trump. That doesn't mean I'm not a Trump fan. Doesn't mean I wouldn't vote for Trump. I voted for Trump twice. I love the man. I even got my own impression of him. It's not good. But again, I am a Trump person. If it's Trump, I will vote for him. But if it's Trump versus Ron, Ron's probably getting my vote. Well, here you have Ron DeSantis, a, a Republican, has issued a tweet listing the types of subjects schools should and should not be teaching. The governor declared that Sunshine State schools will educate rather than indoctrinate students, which I absolutely love. Those that are new to the show, I'm a teacher myself. I teach high school mathematics. Now, there's a lot of indoctrination that I've seen happening in the school system, specifically the public school system, where they'll teach that socialism is good, communism isn't that bad. They'll consistently rip on capitalism, which is why you get these Marxists coming out of the school system. And let's be honest, that's been happening for decades. That's been happening basically since the 60s, maybe earlier, regarding this indoctrination. That's why you got these young kids coming out that are acting as Marxists. 
I mean, you had Thomas Sowell come out as a Marxist as well early on, I think starting at like 16. He took Milton Friedman's course. Milton Friedman is like one of the the, 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 the main guys for capitalism and free markets. And he still came out as a, as a, a Marxist. <laughs> so, you know, there wasn't many things that changed. According to Thomas Sowell, the thing that changed him was working for the government. <laughs> and so the government sucks at everything. So this is the indoctrination type of stuff they're pushing like CRT, like capitalism is bad. America's bad. And they do that through CRT. They're trying to trans your kids. They're pushing sexual content, all sorts of things. Quote, as students head back to their classrooms this fall, I'm happy to clear up any confusion the media may have about appropriate curriculum. DeSantis tweeted listing math, reading, writing as approved subjects, but critical race theory, sexualized content and transgender ideology as disapproved uh, topics. Florida schools will educate children, not indoctrinate them. The tweet earned uh, basically a claim. A lot of people looked at it and approved of it on their social media. Responding to governor's post, parents defending education founder and president Nikki Niley tweeted that is exactly what parents want. Yeah, it's not hard. But for some reason, the progressive left, the Democrat Party wants to groom these kids and guide them along their transition by confusing them. We've seen drag shows performed where literally kids are taking their lunch money and putting it in the G-string of these men that are dressed as women that are basically performing things that you would see at a strip club and they're tipping them for this stuff. And the schools know about it and they're completely fine with it. Granted, some schools don't know about it, but this is what's going on. People are teaching CRT, critical race theory in the classroom. Then you got people like Malcolm Nance going on Bill Maher show with Ben Shapiro, just saying, oh, well, you don't want, you don't want slavery to be taught in the classroom as if who the hell said that we're all okay with that. But what we're not okay with is you telling white kids that even if they think that they're not racist, they still in fact are racist and should be apologizing for their racism. I mean, it goes even a step further than that of just the sheer fact of teaching that America is inherently racist and all institutions have racism interwoven within it that suppress black people and people of color. And the furthermore, they're going to teach people starting at second grade in New Jersey on how to teach them through cartoons on how to masturbate. Furthermore, they're going to use school psychologists and put Planned Parenthood clinics on campuses. This is active. Everything I'm saying is actively happening right now to put Planned Parenthood clinics on campus to refer your children unbeknownst to you to go help with their gender reassignments, whether that's getting the actual lopping off of their boobs or their genitals to all the way of freaking getting hormone enhancers, puberty blockers, plan B contraceptives, all these things unbeknownst to you. So this is the stuff they want to peddle and push within our education system. The progressive left Democrat party is all for it. But why should we rationalize anything regarding the Democrat party right now with everything that's going on from this Biden administration and the Democrat party with abortion, illegal immigration, foreign policy, domestic policy, economic policy, everything they touch just goes down the drain. Literally the Democrat party, everything they practically touch nowadays, nowadays goes down the drain. Very similarly, Practically everything the federal government touch goes down the drain as well. Quote, we need 49 governors who are just like Ron DeSantis, someone else tweeted. Quote, why I moved to Florida, someone else declared. Earlier this year, DeSantis signed legislation that prohibits teaching about sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten through third grade. Folks, just you heard me on that. Kindergarten through third grade and the left is losing their mind over that. The, the, the sheer fact that, that Ron DeSantis wants to prohibit teaching about sexual orientation and gender identity from kindergarten to third grade, and they lost it. Did protest took to the streets because they couldn't groom these kids early on. We did a TikTok the other day where you had this preschool teacher talking about how you need to get all this indoctrination in their minds before the age of four or else it's too late. So if you don't groom these kids early on, which makes sense why they're upset about this legislation that Ron DeSantis put in place, because they, they lost their chances on indoctrinating these kids. They lost their chances on trying to confuse them and make a, a biological male think he's a female and dressing them up in skirts and all this weird stuff, which has happened as well, unbeknownst to parents. Quote, classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through third grade or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. Now notice the word develop because the left doesn't understand that the cognitive brain is still forming. 
that frontal lobe that deals with reason and all sorts of other matters hasn't fully developed either. And so that's why they want to start indoctrinating these kids. But at the same time, you know, hey, these, these kids are able to know who they are at birth, folks. They know if they're a boy or girl. They know if they're non-binary. They know if they're a fox or a kitty cat and all these weird things early on. That's not how it works. If anybody's had a damn kid, you know, like I haven't had kids and I can observe other kids and, and they are able to tell. Furthermore, sex is objective. You can look at genitals. You can look at the person and dictate what they are. There's two genders. There's male and female. Sorry, folks. If you don't like that, hey, you know what? Then that's just reality and you got to deal with the reality. Sometimes reality sucks. Gender and male and female doesn't suck whatsoever. It just is what it is. Okay. According to the left though, dealing with that, it sucks. So that's why I meant Reality might suck for some because they have to deal with it of something of which they disagree with. Welcome to the world. The governor also signed legislation that prohibits promoting certain concepts to students and employees at institutions of public education, such as the idea that a person's moral character or status as either privileged or oppressed is necessarily determined by his or her race, color, national origin, or sex. In a nutshell, what he's talking about is critical race theory. Or that a person, by virtue of his or her race, color, national origin, or sex, is inherently racist, sexist, or oppressive, whether consciously or unconsciously. So again, talking about CRT without actually just talking about CRT plainly by saying, oh, well, CRT shouldn't be taught in schools. He's actually going to step further and being more specific. Quote, no one should be instructed to feel as if they are not equal or shamed because of their race. I mean, you would think that this would be obvious, right? But this is stuff the left want to push and, and uh, pedal upon your kids. In Florida, we will not let the far left woke agenda take over our schools and workplaces. There's no place for indoctrination or discrimination in Florida. But if you look at California, they're all for it. They're all for the discrimination, indoctrination, and the craziness and the shenanigans, which will be the death of this country from the inside out. The governor, who has become an enormously popular figure on the political right, is currently running for re-election in the state's 2022 gubernatorial contest. Now, that's partly the reason why I'm not sure if he will run in 2024 is because he is doing such a great job as a governor in Florida. I forgot, there was a gentleman that left me a comment that was talking to me on the side about the way the governorship is done in Florida. And I wanna say it was only four, uh, two uh, consecutive terms. And so if this is his second consecutive term, then once this term is done, then he would be able to run in 2028. And that was kind of a lot of people's thinking in Florida. Hopefully I'm not getting that wrong. That conversation was a while ago. If you're the one that left me that, let me know in the comment down below in this video. But uh, I think that was one of the reasons why he might not be running. DeSantis's press secretary, uh, Christina Pushaw, responded by tweeting, just teach math, reading, writing, you know, academic subjects, not queer theory or race essentialism. This isn't difficult. It, it's not difficult. But for some reason, for the progressive left, it just must be taught to these kids. It just has to be taught to these kids. Because if it's not, then, you know, what kind of service are we really bringing them? Yes, lopping off their tits, giving them puberty blockers, hormone enhancers, all these things. Yeah, I know you're really giving them a great service. There's no need for confusion. Just stop teaching sexual orientation and gender identity to teach kids in kindergarten through third grade. That shouldn't be a difficult task, Natalie tweeted. Teachers would rather get fired than obey Florida law, says schools. Gay kindergarten teacher on Florida law guarding parental rights. This is the stuff they're pushing where teachers still, still, even though it's against the law, will still push this stuff upon kids. If there's a law mandated, I'm following it. It is not worth losing my career. Furthermore, it is odd. Again, this is coming from a teacher's perspective to be talking about sexual things with students. And that, in, that includes gender within itself. I'm a math teacher. I'm there to teach you certain subjects. Sometimes it does get political because I also teach finance as well. And there are political things that affect your finances of which, you know, if a president increases taxes, usually that's not a good thing on your finances. The less money in your pocket always is not a good thing. So those types of things arise. But if a, a student came up to me like, can I talk to you about uh, my gender and, and my change and I'm confused and all this stuff, whatever it may be, I'll say, I'm, I apologize. You need to have a conversation with your parent. Uh, I don't feel comfortable having that conversation with you. It's not that hard. Just end the conversation. You're the one with the power in the classroom to start or end conversations. But for some reason, these teachers just want to push it upon these kids as if it's life or death. It's not worth it. Nor do I want to have that conversation. It's freaking awkward and weird. They're not my kids. Have that conversation with their parent. Don't even bother asking. I'm just there to teach you. I'm not there to be your friend. I'm there to be kind and, and to guide you along in your academics to teach you the best way I possibly can so that you can be successful in your life, regardless of gender, regardless of race, regardless of how you feel. I am there just to set you up and help you be successful in life through mathematics. And that is my job. And as long as I do that job well and that you are successful in life, then, then my job has meaning. My job has purpose. 
My meaning and purpose is not to help you find your identity in terms of you classifying yourself as a male or female. I apologize. It's not. There's other avenues to go get those answers. Start with your parents. Your parents should be guiding you and helping you along that process, not teachers, not psychologists from the school administration without parental involvement, not a school administrator, not all these things. You need to start with your parents first. Trust your parents. They're there to love you. They're there to help you. They're there to guide you and raise you. You, you got to just seek after them first before you start seeking after all these other people thinking your parents don't know best. And parents, for some reason, there's a generation where where they want to get confirmation from somebody else rather than confirmation from their parents, even though they got confirmation from their parents already. You see this all the time of like a student walking up, should I get a job? I'm really thinking about getting a job. I'm just giving you something basic that happens in real life. And I would my follow-up is always this. Well, what did your parents say? Well, my parents think I should get a job. That, yeah, you should get a job, right? It's an easy it's an easy position for me as a teacher to say, yeah, you should get a job is just follow along with whatever the parent says. I mean, that's if the parent says get a job, then yeah, get a job. You should. They're your parents. They're there to guide you, help you, raise you. I'm not there to raise you. I'm helping to guide you and help you along your academics strictly. So I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to be clear and give you kind of a teacher's perspective of what goes into my mind when a student asks me an oddball question or something. Majority of the time, it's what did your parents say? Have you talked to your parents about this? And I always say, hey, why don't you follow up with your parents? They're there to help you and guide you. So always instruct the uh, the, the, the student or, or the child, whoever you're dealing with, to go to the parents. And, and that's the correct way about it. Now, our last news story of the day, there's kind of a wombo combo here. There's two dealing with illegal immigration. Now, we've been covering this since day one here on the Bald Brad show with the massive influx of illegals just crossing our U.S.-Mexico border. We're looking at six to eight thousand per day. We've had a caravan of upwards of 15 to 20,000 come from South America. You have over 200,000 coming across each and every month. You have over 800,000 gotaways excuse me, meaning those that have been apprehended or excuse me, those that have not been apprehended or even caught, just just walked into the interior of the country unbeknownst to Border Patrol. And those numbers are lowballed, by the way. Those numbers, are, and, and that comes out from Border Patrol themselves is that they think it's upwards of well over a million people that have just walked into the country. There's also uh, illegals just being flown under the, the dead of the night by plane, by bus, by bus all over the United States. I mean, it is wild. We have done so many episodes on this. I hate to repeat myself, but again, you know, folks, we do have a lot of new viewers here on this. So I, I just type in bald Brad, illegal immigration, see what you can find because we've been covering this extensively. So it says here, first on Fox, the suspect facing kidnapping and murder charges in Alabama after a 12 year old girl's escape from a mobile home prompted the discovery of two decomposing corpses is an illegal immigrant who was deported from the United States once before. This article actually comes from a viewer. So thank you so much for sending me this. If you guys have any articles, I do read all my emails. My email's in the description below. Toss me whatever you would like me possibly to cover. There's a lot of stuff I got to go over, but uh, this one really stuck out to me because look, this crime would have never happened if this person was never allowed to come into the country in the first place as an illegal immigrant. The last name is Reyes, was charged with first degree kidnapping, three counts of capital murder, and two counts of abuse of a corpse in connection to the gruesome discovery is considered a re-entry non-immigrant unlawful presence for national. That's all there. Re-entry non-immigrant unlawful presence for national. Illegal. It's an illegal immigrant. That's all you need to call it. Okay. This whole this whole phrase of of you know R N U P F N you know it's just it's just call it for what it is. Okay. Come on. We don't. We need to stop. We need to stop pussifying our country. Just, everybody's so sensitive. And now we got to call it something like that. Re-entry, non-immigrant, unlawful presence, foreign national. That's how soft we freaking got. Because you don't want to offend anybody, right? You don't want to offend anybody that literally just killed a bunch of people, allegedly, right? This 12-year-old girl had to s escape from this individual. But we want to make sure we dance around and walk on eggshells because we don't want to offend that person. That means, according to Abbott, that 37-year-old Reyes was deported by Homeland Security to Mexico before, but the sheriff could not confirm that time frame or when it was believed to have re-entered the United States and to have come to Alabama. You have the county sheriff's office first responded to the area at approximately 8.30 a.m. on Monday to call 911 from a driver who reportedly stopped to help a 12-year-old girl spotted wandering the road. Reyes, listed as living at that address, was arrested by U.S. Marshals in Auburn, Alabama. Overnight investigation at the mobile home led to discovery of two decomposing corpses. Abbott confirmed to Fox News Digital that those bodies were that of a woman. 
and her son, a boy under the age of 14. Oh, God. Investigators believed that the deceased woman was Reyes's girlfriend. Abbott praised the surviving 12-year-old girl as a hero, saying she endured almost a week of torture. But remember, everybody coming across the border just wants a better life, you guys. They want to assimilate into this country. They don't need to be vetted, according to the Democrat Party. They just need to be just allowed to get, be given an opportunity so that you know families are killed. Girls are raped. You know, people are shot. People are killed. Crime just is, is riddled. You know, why should we be worried about that? Why why be worried about MS-13 gang members coming across the border? Why should we have to worry about that? You know, that's a privilege that you have if you're worrying about that. Let's go as far as to say it's a white privilege if you have to worry about something like that. I mean, that's according to MSNBC with something a little bit different in terms of gas prices and inflation. But I like to think there's a little bit more of a seriousness in your life of having the potential of an illegal immigrant uh, killing your family, torturing little girls, killing young men allegedly the complaint says the girl is believed to have been tied to bedposts for at least a week was assaulted and kept in a drug light state by being pilled with alcohol jeez she escaped by chewing through her restraints according to court documents i mean this is unbelievable i mean how many how many people do you think this is going on to right now from illegals alone i mean there are going to be some monster americans out there doing the exact same thing that we just don't know about furthermore previously deported illegal aliens sentenced four months in prison after re-entering country identity fraud so this is another person a previously reported illegal alien has been sentenced to four months in federal prison followed by three years of supervised release after re-entering the united states and stealing an american social security number for employment purposes Four months? Stealing somebody's identity? Four months? And you're, and you're an illegal alien? You get four months and then, then three years of supervised release? What the hell does that mean? Ventura, 34, pleaded guilty in May to illegally re-entering the United States after being deported in 2017. So just... <laughs> repeat offense, sir. Right? Repeat offense. <laughs> like, but hey, bud, you're just going to get four months. We might even give you less. The Guatemalan national was also found guilty of using another person's social security card for employment forms in Waterloo, New Hampton, Lime Springs, and Cedar Falls, Iowa in 2021. She also claimed to be a U.S. citizen. She was sentenced to prison on Wednesday. Ventura's arrest comes as the nation deals with one of the worst illegal immigration crises in decades. Data indicates that the fiscal year 2021, authorities encountered 1.7 million migrants in the first eight months of the fiscal year 2022. Folks, folks, you heard that number correct. Eight months, not a year, not five years, not a decade. Eight months of just this year alone have already encountered over 1.7 million migrants. Just imagine the sheer number of those that weren't apprehended, that weren't encountered. There has been murders that we've gone over that have been encountered. Okay, there's been terrorists that have been caught. There's been gang members that have been caught, drug uh, traffickers, sex traffickers. All this stuff has been caught. Think about the ones that haven't been caught. That's the that's the important part as well. You think that there's maybe one terrorist in this country we don't know about? Probably. You think there's a lot of MS-13 or just violent gang members that we don't know about? Probably. Democrats are all for it. Joe Biden's all for it. He has no plan on fixing it because he wants to give amnesty to everybody. He wants to give amnesty to all these people, whether you committed a crime or not, all for it. The Biden administration has released at least 1.4, 1.04 million people into the U.S. interior. Those figures do not include the number of legalists who evaded authority entirely. That, that was the gotaways that I was speaking of. You're talking over 2 million people Joe Biden has just let into the interior of the United States illegally. 2 million people. To help solve the problem, border states like Arizona, Texas have been uh, busting illegal immigrants to blue cities and states. And if you recall... You had uh, Washington, D.C. Mayor uh, Muriel Bowser complaining about the influx of illegal immigrants into the Washington, D.C. area, and it's basically having an effect on their infrastructure. And that's being echoed by Eric Adams in New York City, saying that New York City uh, uh, citizens need to take it upon themselves to house all these illegal immigrants. And if you don't do so, then we're going to have to put them in shelters or have the churches take care of them, or we're just going to let them sleep on the streets. So they don't have money to take care of all this. So now it's their problem as well. But see, they were okay early on with just having these border states take care of it, have these border states pay for their COVID, vac uh, COVID tests. We did a story on that early on during 2020 when the Biden administration was just literally greyhound busing these little immigrants into these localities 
without anybody knowing and then having the localities themselves foot the bills to have these illegal immigrants get tested and so there were certain towns that actually had to file state of emergencies because they didn't have the funds for it so the federal government was just like oh well, here you go deal with it so now that we're doing the same thing, you have you have Karine Jean-Pierre coming on the podium the other day against Peter Ducey saying that Republicans are using them as political pawns. Matter of fact, we are using them as political pawns, just as you were doing the same thing, making taxpayers and localities at Texas, Arizona, foot the bill when you don't want to do your job, when you're doing a dereliction of duty, not doing your job as the executive branch to execute the laws that are on the books. And if there were policies on the books like the Trump administration did, you're going to remove them and make the matters worse. So good. Deal with the problem. All the lefties, all the progressive lefties in Washington, D.C. And, and New York, you get to deal with it. Good. House them yourself. Keep them on the streets. Watch what happens with the crime. Watch what happens with the drugs. Watch what happens with all these things. Because now you just have an example of allegedly an illegal alien apprehending, I should say apprehending, kidnapping a 12-year-old girl, tying her to a bedpost, drugging her, keeping her basically in a drug-induced coma, assaulting her, where she had to chew through her own ropes and ties to get let loose. All the while, they find two de decomposing bodies. That's what the Democrat Party wants. They're the ones to blame. You, you cannot blame the Republicans for this. You cannot blame the conservatives for this. This is not us. This is not on us. It is on the Democrat Party, and they don't want to admit it. You know how I know they don't want to admit it? Eric Adams himself was blaming the southern states for all of it. He was blaming the Republican Party for the crisis that's happening at the U.S.-Mexico border. Wrap your head around it. You can't. It's mind-bending because... Again, the theme, they suck at messaging. And two, they don't deal with reality. For the love of God, they don't deal with reality. The only time they do deal with reality is when reality strikes them right upside the damn head when you got illegal immigrants now coming into your city and you don't know how to handle it because your infrastructure wasn't prepared to have that massive influx. Go figure. I feel like somebody has talked about that before. Oh, wait, it was here on the Bald Brad Show where we said, if you have open borders, our system isn't built for that in this present time. If you want to build a system that's for that, there's a conversation to be had. I'm not really for it, but there's a conversation at least be had. But now they're seeing, even on a small level, of just, a, of just a few million people's coming in through the U.S.-Mexico border. They can't, the infrastructure in these cities can't handle it, but they want to have open borders where everybody around the globe will come in. I mean, the amount of tens of millions of people that would come here in the matter of a week would be mind blowing. You got to find them jobs. You got to find them housing. You got to get them all set up. You got to get their paperwork going. I mean, the resilience and the, and the, and the reliability that you would have on the government would be mind blowing for something like that. The government can't get crap, right? The government can't do anything correct. They just want you to spend and waste your money. And we see that present time with Joe Biden, which is why we have this inflation crisis, which is why we have so many crises happening along the United States, because the Democrats suck at everything. And so does the government. But the Democrats want to give more power to the government and less power to you and I, the American citizens. There you have it, folks. That is the Friday show. We gave you a banger today. I was trying to see if we can beat the time. I keep looking at the clock here. See if we can beat the time. I wanted to try to make these a little bit longer, about 45 minutes to an hour. But damn, we get through these. There is so much to say. I don't want to bog you down with all the unnecessary stuff that I present to you sometimes. But heck, I love you all. Thank you so much for supporting the Bald Brad Show. Leave us a comment down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. Folks, have a fabulous weekend. Be on the lookout for Supernatural Saturdays, where we take a day out of the week, one day out of the week, which is Saturdays, to go over the unexplained, the supernatural, the paranormal, and kind of just deviate away from the politics and the craziness of the world and kind of maybe step in somewhat of the realm of non-reality, the realm of which Democrats deal with, of like Bigfoot <laughs> and all those other things. But it is a fun time, folks. We react to ghost videos, alien videos, all sorts of stuff. It is a fun time. So I'd love for you to join us here tomorrow here on Supernatural. And folks, again, I will see you Sunday here on The Bob Brad Show.